are there as well. Uh, let's just go back to Clifford May, who's been sitting with me uh, as we see these pictures coming in live uh, from Paris. And uh, the security operation that's wheeled into action incredibly quickly uh, this evening, uh, in your view, to have gone to the uh, attacker's house within a few minutes just shows how closely they are monitoring certain people. They are monitoring a lot of people, and if they can identify them, they have dossiers upon dossiers. The problem is that as they get so many dossiers, what is it that they can do about that? How many people can you, after all, manage to monitor, monitor surveil, and keep track of? Over time, this gets more and more difficult. Look, I don't know how this plays out in the elections exactly. I do know this, that on the minds of French voters uh, from now till, uh, till, till the election takes place. Well, President Hollande, according to Reuters, has said this is a, a terrorist attack. Uh, according, oh, well. uh, a, a crisis uh, meeting as well. The fact that the, an AK-47 was used uh, suggests that is the case as well. Also, in terms of the destabilizing effect something like this has in the run-up to the first round of a presidential election. Yes, because you know that voters will have on their minds terrorism, jihadism, Islamism, migration. And they will be listening to the candidates and deciding which one they trust to deal with this matrix of issues. They may be thinking less about the economy, less about a lot of other issues. This puts this front and center. And the question is which of these candidates is most persuasive that he or she knows what to do about this for, from France's point of view. And, and when you think of a country like France, a, a, a beacon of civilization, the fact that in the past two years, not just the big, really blood-drenched attacks like Charlie Hebdo and uh, Bataclan and Nice, but almost on a weekly basis, just lower-level attacks against security uh, officials. There was one only a few weeks ago, the Louvre, wasn't there, where a man was, uh, was shot as he pulled out a, a cleaver. And there are various attacks that have been stopped, one in Marseille a few days ago, that they have managed to prevent and very well. But this does have an impact on a society, on a civilization, such as we see in France and all of Europe and all of the world, and it is meant to. And it's easy to say, je suis Charlie, and I'm going to be tough, and we're not going to give up freedom. But I'm not sure it's true. Charlie Hebdo is not what it used to be. And there's plenty of self-censorship taking place in Europe, in the United States. Our freedoms are being restricted by terrorists. And I would argue with you that this goes all back at least to 1989, when the Ayatollah Khomeini said that Salman Rushdie should be killed because he, a British subject wrote a book that he thought insults Islam. And instead of the Europeans saying we're cutting off relations, they said, oh, that's too bad for Salman Satan Rushdie. Satan versus a fatwa uh, issued by uh, exactly. the uh, Ayatollah, as you say, then. Clifford May, thank you very much indeed. Let's just leave you uh, with these live pictures from Paris tonight. Just to confirm, one police officer shot dead and an attacker as well. Two police officers uh, injured, one seriously. The gunman's home, we understand, now raided by anti-terrorist officers to the east of Paris. You're watching BBC World News America.